I've got another box from Cross Exotics. This one should be my Nepenthes Atenborei. Let's get this open and see what it looks like. It's getting exciting. This definitely looks well packed, which is something I'm used to from them. And there you go, Nepenthes Atenborei AW513. Let's see, how should I get this off? The one on the bottom clearly has the soil in it, so I'll just try to pull the tape off this top one. And there we are, we can see the plant. It's ready to go into my Highland Terrarium. Let's go take it down. And there it is, it looks very nice in there. And over there is my seed-grown Nepenthes paloanensis, which I also got from Cross Exotics. It's growing a nice new pitcher there. There's a few old pitchers back there that I fertilized, and it's growing another new one behind the pot. It originates from Borneo Exotics. I can't get a clear enough video of the tag. Oh, there we go. BE4013 seed-grown. So there you go. That's my paloanensis. I got it also for a very good price, especially for its size. I've had it in here for like six months. It's doing quite nicely. To the left, I've got this Nepenthes Raja, which I've had for eight months. It is also doing very well. Its growth is somewhat slowed down by a very large number of basal growths that it's got but I don't mind it staying small for longer, especially because when it does get big, all those basils will make it quite a dramatic multi-growth point plant. And in case you're interested, it is a BE3152, and I got it from Carnivero. Then this is a new addition, I guess less new than the Atenborei, but Still quite new, it's an Nepenthes Lowei Truzmati. Now the story behind this, I can't actually remember which seller sold it to me. I've got a screenshot somewhere that shows that. But anyway, uh, they had a big Lowei in a six inch pot, which is still in here, a six inch net pot. And they took a bunch of cuttings of it and then waited for the root system to produce basils. It produced two of them. And they've actually produced a few new leaves for me in my care since I got it. And they sold it on eBay for $120. So for a root system that big that will help me get a large low AI much sooner than I would normally, uh, I thought that was a pretty good deal. It's certainly a fun thing to buy and uh, try growing. At the very minimum, it would at least perform as well as a normal low AI about this size, which wouldn't have been all that much cheaper than $120. See, I think I might actually have a way of getting a better shot at some of the basils at the base of this Raja. Okay, do you see that? I mean, there are basils all over the place. It doesn't really do it justice on the camera. I'm very excited to see how this actually matures, and it really has been growing stably and reliably. And that's one of the reasons why I know that the conditions in this terrarium are actually pretty good. And speaking of that, I'm going to explain how it works. This is what the terrarium looks like as a whole. You can see there's a tub inside that's sitting in blankets. And then those blankets and tub are sitting in a larger tub outside. And there's a chiller right there. So basically what I've got going on here is a few inches of water in the bottom of the terrarium there in the inner tub that's chilled during the night by that chiller down to like 45 degrees. Then there's a fan, the blue thing, that blows air across the surface of the water and that brings the air temperature down a little below 55. I've seen it go down to 53. It really depends on what's going on in the room outside. And then the top is covered over with plastic wrap. The light on top is a fluorowave light. I don't remember the exact model, but it's been doing very well for my Highland Nepenthes in there. Now, during the day, I often unplug the fan to preserve its life. It's a cheap fan, probably not necessary to do that cost-wise, and it's proven to be extremely resilient, so it might not even be necessary to meaningfully increase its life, even if it were expensive. Unfortunately, I can't just put the fan on a timer because when the power gets cut, it gets set in an off setting. So when the power comes back on, the on switch actually needs to be pressed. So when I want to preserve the life of the fan, I have to 
unplug it at the beginning of the day and then plug it back in and turn it on at nighttime. Fortunately, the light and the chiller both work on a timer, so I don't have to mess with those. And when I'm gone, I just leave the fan on all day, and that has worked very well for me. Here's a closer look at that fan. It's a USB fan that operates, I think, on 5 volts as a result. And I just used an iPhone wall charger that I found abandoned on the university campus that I go to. So that's how that works. Then down there is the pump that pushes water through the chiller at nighttime. Here is one last look at my Highland Nepenthes. I hope this video is interesting. Thanks for watching.